You'll recognize our next guest face from long-running shows like Law & Order SVU, hit films like The Devil's Advocate, in flight and in Broadway classics like Julius Caesar. And now she's the celebrity spokesperson for the Caribbean Tourism Organization's annual Caribbean Week, and it is a blast. <laughs> Gracing us with her amazing presence is the incomparable Tamara Tooney. Thank <laughs> you for being Tooney. here. Thank you Yay! for having me. <laughs> well, I feel like we've all grown up with you. You've been on Law and Order since 2000? Yes, yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. It's been uh, this. I just finished my. 13th season on the show. Oh it's picked goodness. up for another season next year, so I'm hoping to still be playing Dr. Warner. Uh, but it's been incredible. I just went on to do one episode and it turned into this long of a run. Well, so. I was going to ask you next did you have any idea that this show, one, would be wildly popular after all these years, and two, that it would be one of the longest running roles that you've ever held? No idea whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, one, it's interesting because the original Law and Order, you know, was so very, very popular. And so when this SVU incarnation came on. Um, everyone was waiting to see, you know, how would it play out. And, um, you know, the writers are so fantastic are. on that show. Mm -hmm. And we have an amazing cast. So I think the combination just made it a hit and keeps it going. Now, really? why do you think this particular show is so successful? Because out of the franchise, this is the only one still standing. That's an interesting question. And I attribute it to two things, I think. I think, one, because I think the cast on the show remain the same cast for such a long time okay. with uh, Chris Maloney and Mariska Hargitay leading the charge. And also, I think that on SBU, they allowed you to get a little bit into the personal lives mm -hmm. of the characters. And I think it gets the audience a little bit, you know, more access to them as human beings. You were shot. I was shot, for example, and saved my own life. And saved right. your own life. Now that is impressive. No, right? It was one of the best episodes. Thank you, thank you. It was fantastic. You know, in, in a, you took a, that bullet like a champ, too. Thank you. A very famous French actress, Isabelle Huppert, was the star. She's the one who shot me mm -hmm. on the show, and I've been a big fan of hers for for decades. And uh, when she came on the show. Uh, you know, I just went and said, oh, I loved your movie and this and movie and that. And she was so amazed and, and flattered that I would even know what she had done in, in Europe. So it, it, it was fun. And it was fun to have her shoot me. <laughs> First time someone's ever said that. But okay. <laughs> well, you've had such an amazing body of work. And the range is also equally as impressive. I'm just... just researching this and you were Jessica Griffin on As the World Turns. You've appeared in gritty dramas like NYPD Blue, Spencer for Hire, New York Undercover. Wow. You've worked with Al Pacino <laughs> in films like The Devil's Advocate, Denzel Washington in films like Flight. You've even won a Tony Award. What's the secret? Oh, uh, gosh. I don't, I don't know how to say no, I think. Um, <laughs> what no, haven't you done? No, I'm just, you know, I'm a hard worker. I'm a multitasker. I come from a family of very hard workers. You know, I, most people know I grew up in Pittsburgh, and it's a, you know, a real blue-collar town. Steel was strong when I was growing up. And, um, and, and my parents and everyone around me, I mean, everybody worked and worked mm -hmm. hard. So it just comes naturally. And, and s since I've been a child, I've been a multitasker. My mm -hmm. mother was always like, you're doing too much because I was on the basketball team. I was on the track team. I was in plays. I was in the choir. I was, you know, you name it, I did it. So, so you don't sleep, basically. I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> I don't get a lot of sleep. Well, you know, a lot of actors, especially black actors in Hollywood, they say they can't find enough roles, but you seem to have the opposite problem. You get too many roles. <laughs> you think it's the, the variety and diversity of characters you're able to play mm -hmm. that helps you with that? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I don't think there can ever be too many roles. I hear that. <laughs> right. so, right. Just saying. Just saying. I'm available. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it is still challenging. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, otherwise we wouldn't, the question wouldn't even come up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I approach work as work, and I work in all mediums. I do uh, a theater mm -hmm. as well as film and television. I do readings of plays for people for change. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I like to work. I like to be available. I think work breeds work. And I think you just have to, you know, be persistent and keep your head to the grindstone and don't accept no as an answer. I like that. work breeds work. That's a good mm -hmm. one. I'll write that one down. <laughs> I, I wish I could say I coined it. I did not. Oh, it works for me. <laughs> now, both of your parents are morticians. I didn't realize that. Yes. Did that help you prepare for your Law & Order SVU work? Well, I wouldn't say that necessarily, uh -huh. um, though I did grow up in a funeral home. And so I've been, you know, exposed to death and um, 
dead body since I was a child. And so what was that it's like? not a big deal. Well, I was born into the business, mm -hmm. so it was just a natural environment for me. Now, for my friends who would come to visit, or, was, or who didn't come to visit. Or who didn't come to visit, exactly. <laughs> who didn't come to visit. Yeah, it was a whole different thing. Wow. But um, you know what, what I think affected, what I think helped my, my portrayal of Dr. Warner mostly was my ninth grade biology class. And that's yeah. why I tell kids all the time, really? if, if you want to be an actor, you know, study, you know, do well in your subjects in school, read all, all that you can, because you just never know what's going to influence mm. A role that might be presented to you, and I swear I, I know all the bones in the body from ninth grade biology. Wow. Wow. You're taking us back to high school, <laughs> so take us also back to that first time you were bit by the acting bug, and how did you break into the business? Do you, re do you remember your first job? Today? Well, I do remember my first job, um, uh, and, and ironically, all through grade school and most of high school, my uh, path trajectory was medicine. I wanted mm -hmm. to be a doctor. Okay. Really? You know, so I'm not a doctor, but I play, <laughs> play one on TV. TV. <laughs> but, uh, it all worked out. <laughs> it all worked out. But somewhere around spring of junior year into senior year, mm -hmm. you know, I've been performing since I was a kid, you know, just locally and community and church and, you know, and just at that point I said, you know, this is what I really love. This is mm -hmm. what I, I want to pursue. So I applied to uh, Carnegie Mellon University's drama school. Okay. And uh, I was accepted there. And so the summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I actually got paid for acting. Mm -hmm. And it was with a, 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 um, a theater company that CMU and the city of Pittsburgh partnered on that toured the different parks mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. And it was called the Park Players. Ah. And that was my first job. You were a park player. I was a park player. Okay. <laughs> player. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mentioned your 2000 Tony Award win, 2007 Tony Award win for Spring Awakening. What was it like to have your work honored in that way? And give us your Tony predictions, because that's happening this weekend. Yes, it is. The mm -hmm. Tonys are this weekend. You know, Spring Awakening was such an extraordinary and wonderful experience for me. Uh, it was my first time participating as a producer on a, a, a Broadway musical. And I'm at the point in my career where I really think it's important for those of us who are established and who have access and networks to support other people's work, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I love the team that was put together for Spring Awakening, particularly Bill T. Jones, his first, first venture into Broadway, which I thought was really exciting and thrilling. Um, and, and I love the piece, so I, you know, I aligned myself with it. And, you know, because of the subject matter, it's a little uh, racy, if you will. Mm -hmm. It deals with, you know, teen sexuality and mm -hmm. abortion and suicide and, you know, all these heavy subject matters. We didn't know what the response would be. So to win the Tony that year for that show was really fantastic. Wow. Well, congratulations. Okay, Thank so you. who's walking away with a Tony this weekend? Oh, gosh, I wish I could say for <laughs> sure. You well, know, who do you want to win? Well, my fingers are crossed, first of all, for Billy Porter, because he's amazing in Kinky okay. Boots, yes. and Kinky Boots is such a great show. Such a great show. Great it's such a great show. Great yes, great, great reviews. reviews. Yeah. Um, and then I would love to see um, Cicely Tyson oh, walk away with a Tony yeah. for Trip to Bountiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, there are, um, are many deserving uh, uh, roles and, and actors who are portraying these roles that I hope get the nod. But I, I really hope that Kinky Boots um, wins uh, Best Musical. All right. Well, we have to, before we leave, we have to move on to something exciting that you're currently doing. You're now yes. the spokesperson for the annual Caribbean Week events. Now, tell us what all goes on and what is your job or your duties entail? Well, there are all kinds of exciting things going on this mm -hmm. week um, from, from the business end of Caribbean tourism to the entertaining end of Caribbean tourism. Okay. Uh, the Caribbean tourism organization represents 30 different countries mm -hmm. uh, in, in the Caribbean. You know, a lot of people just think Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Haiti, maybe Dominican Republic, but there are 30 countries and four different languages. So all kinds of culture and all kinds of uh, uh, fabulous cuisine. Oh, and food. I love to go right. to the islands. That's why I said yes, because I love to go to the <laughs> islands. Uh, but two of the featured events I want to talk about, one is uh, this evening, um, it's the uh, One Caribbean Vacation Mart mm. that's going to be at the Hotel New Yorker, right okay. by Madison Square mm -hmm. Garden. Yeah. 
And uh, basically, it's it's all the, the the vendors are there to demonstrate and offer different kinds of vacation packages, and they're all being offered at a discount. So if you come, you can really get a great deal on a Caribbean vacation. Well, I know and what we're doing tonight. Uh, that's a perfect reason to go. <laughs> yeah. That's a good well, teaser. And this might interest you. I don't know, but there's also a romance pavilion oh. for couples who are engaged or who maybe want to celebrate an anniversary, where you can get a beautiful package there and. Um, and uh, there's a, a, a prize, a contest, and you can win an $8,000 wedding package. And then the wow. other thing I just want to talk about quickly is Friday night. It's rum and rhythm. There'll be rum tastings, food tastings, mm. and also it's a fundraiser to benefit the scholarship foundation that Caribbean Tourism has established. Wow. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. <laughs> rum and rhythm. Rum and rhythm. <laughs> I like that. Those are two good R's. Now, would you say there are things for the whole family at this event? I think it's more geared to adults right, because right. it is kind of a, 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 an expo, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I think that children definitely can benefit definitely. from... Okay, I like that part. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, lastly, before we go, what upcoming projects can we see you in or on? I know you said Law & Order SVU will be mm -hmm. back, and you may be back. Mm -hmm. Anything else you're working on well, that you I just, know about? I just finished an independent film called Fall to Rise okay. that will probably be out next year. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been producing and cultivating along a brand-new musical called Frog Kiss mm -hmm. that we mounted in uh, Virginia to much success that we're bringing to Broadway uh, eventually. And uh, basically, it's a, it's a bedtime story for grown-ups. It's based on a novella called The Frog Prince, A Fairy Tale for Consenting Adults. Ooh. And it's fabulous. A bedtime story for adults. <laughs> I like fabulous. that. I like that, too. Well, Tamara Tooney, we like you. Thank you so much for being here. And Thank come you. back again soon, please. It's my pleasure. All Thank right. you so much. Take Thank care. you. You're watching Arise Entertainment 360.